Apple has just wrapped up its Wanderlust event and announced the usual suspects, a new iPhone, a new Apple Watch, but they left out one pretty significant announcement, especially for us sound guys. That's right, Apple has finally released an AirPods Pro Gen 2 with a USB-C port on the charging case. Not only that, Apple has also improved the durability rating of the AirPods Pro 2 from IPX4 to IP54, and the AirPods Pro 2 will support ultra low latency, lossless 20-bit, 48 kilohertz audio with the upcoming Apple Vision Pro. But durability and streaming quality aside, this announcement brings up some interesting questions. Specifically, why did it take Apple this long to introduce USB-C to the AirPods. Now, before we can answer that question, we need to first talk about the Lightning connector itself. More specifically, why did Apple try so hard to keep Lightning alive? Is it really all about the money or is there more to it? Well, the actual answer is a little bit more complicated than that, so please keep watching. Now, if keeping Lightning alive is not all about the money, then maybe there is a technical reason for it. So is the Lightning connector better than USB-C, especially when it comes to audio? Well, in order to answer that, let's actually take a look at the MFI or made for iPhone specifications for Lightning Audio. According to the made for iPhone program specs, headphones using the Lightning connector are capable of receiving 48 kilohertz stereo digital audio output from Apple devices. Lightning equipped headphones are also able to send a mono 48 kilohertz input, which basically translates to microphone support. The made for iPhone specification for Lightning Audio also states that manufacturers can also trigger volume and playback controls, and Lightning headphones should have the ability to work with companion apps. Now all that sounds great, lossless audio, audio input and output, and software compatibility. But do you know what other connector can do all those things and more? USB-C. <laughs> By the way, that Apple made for iPhone program that I mentioned earlier, yeah, keep that in mind as you watch this video because in the words of Mickey Mouse, it's a surprise tool that will help us later. So if Lightning isn't technically superior to USB-C, then why does Apple keep using it? Well, the answer can actually be found as far back as 1984 when Apple released their first Macintosh computer. And it was designed to give Apple end-to-end -end control over its devices and dissuade customers from taking matters into their own hands. From its early years, Apple's design ethos has always been about control and this guiding principle still applies to the Lightning connector. You see, if you want to make a pair of headphones that use the Lightning connector, or if you want to even make a basic lightning cable accessory, you have to be a part of Apple's made for iPhone program. And once you're in the program, you have to go through Apple's arduous certification process, which ensures that your accessory conforms to Apple's quality, safety, and performance standards. And as part of your journey to product certification, you'll of course have to pay the $99 annual membership fee, as well as any royalties and component costs associated with your accessories development all of which is conveniently hidden behind an NDA and is also only available to approved made for iPhone program applicants. See where I'm going with this? Apple wants to keep Lightning alive, not because it's technologically superior, but because it gives them control. And with that control, Apple can charge a premium in the form of royalties and fees for anyone who wants to use the Lightning connector or just make Lightning products. In fact, according to rough calculations from Apple Insider, Apple makes an estimated $5 billion just by selling Lightning cables and made for iPhone certificates. So you can see why Apple has tried to push back against USB-C for so long. Apple doesn't control the USB-C standard, therefore they can't charge manufacturers license fees, component costs, or royalties. Now it remains to be seen where the drama goes with Apple and how they're gonna deal with their whole made for iPhone certification program. And it also remains to be seen how the shift to USB-C will dent Apple's profits. But the fact of the matter is that despite their best efforts and because of the legislation released by the EU, Apple is gonna switch over to USB-C, and the new iPhone 15 and refreshed AirPods Pro 2 is just the beginning of Apple's new chapter of port selection. And speaking of USB-C, another product that is more than likely gonna get USB-C as well has to be the highly anticipated, long-awaited refresh, AirPods Max 2. And if you wanna know more about this rumored device, when it comes out, what specs to expect, then you should check out our rumors roundup video right here.